I'm Dave Davis, and September's What's Neat This Week starts right now. This is What's Neat for September 2017. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we go and visit the St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet held in Collinsville, St. Louis, Missouri here. And this show this year was fantastic. There was 25,000 square feet of floor and models and everything to be seen, which I think was about 30% larger than last year. I counted 15 new manufacturers, and in fact, we interview seven of them for the show. They show us their new products, and we also interview two great modelers. So this is a really nice episode this month, about 40 minutes for September. Now I am sitting at the round table which we are now using to launch a new What's Neat This Week podcast. Chris Palomares and all the guys that we hang out with and a lot of folks that we're going to interview have all been helping out as a group. We've figured this out. We've come up with a method where we can produce the show very quickly, uh, cost virtually nothing to do it, and at the same time, it'll keep you updated every week with what's new in model railroading in addition to the What's Neat video that we do for Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine every month. So that's the news this month is a brand new table to work from where we will conduct interviews for this new weekly podcast. One last thing I'd like to say, there's been a lot of people over the years that have asked me about purchasing my photographs online and a lot of times they'd like to get autographed prints. I've made arrangements with a website called fineartamerica.com Whereas I can now sell my photography, my beautiful model railroad photographs, some of the better ones that I think we've made over the years, where you can purchase them, have them hung up in your home, and they'll ship it right to you. They'll frame it, shoot, they'll put it on coffee mugs and towels if you want. But check it out, this is something a new venture that I'm launching here, and all the proceeds are going to go back to the What's Neat show so that we can keep producing good content. That's fineartamerica.com, and then you'll index the word Ken Patterson in order to get to the site with all of the photographs and I currently have 25 of them up online right now that can be purchased and printed out in various sizes. So otherwise let's now continue on with the rest of this month's September What's Neat the St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm Stephen Priest, and we're watching What's Neat This Week with Ken Patterson. segment of What's Neat, I've got Gene Fusco from Inner Mountain. Now, Inner Mountain's been making model railroad products better than now for almost 30 years. I used to work with Bob Bickley over at Inner Mountain, and one of the things that we tried to do when I started working for them was to create model ads where all the models were weathered to give them credibility. This was a shot from about 1992 that I had done for them, and today I've got Gene Fusco from Inner Mountain, and he's here in St. Louis at the Prototype Modelers Meet, and Gene, I want to ask you, tell us what's new in the lineup today. Okay, today we brought our Tier 4 Jeevos. We have five of our pre-production samples that came fresh from the factory about two weeks ago, and we've been running around our test track here and showing them off to people. Uh, factory is currently in production. We hope to have them out in mid-July. 
Now, I'm telling you, these are some beautiful models. I was looking at the radiators on them. It just looks fantastic. This is all new tooling, is that right? That's correct. It's all new tooling. Do these, uh, and these have sound in them? They have sound. The ones I brought do not have sound. This factory only sent us one sound sample, okay. and the guys at the shop wouldn't let me take that with, uh, with me. Now, do you guys <laughs> design your own sound system, or whose sound do you use? They're using ESU Loc Sound. Okay. And okay. Uh, Matt Herman at ESU helped out. He went out and recorded Jivo Special for us, and that is our own uh, sound file. These are absolutely beautiful models. Now, you said you had something new in N scale? We have our SD40-2 locomotives. We've been working through all the different road names that we've announced on them, and uh, those are available now. It's shipping to uh, our dealers and customers. The N scale guys will be excited about that, and they always say we don't have enough N scale on the show, and I'll tell you, these models are beautiful, as you can see from this footage that you're looking at right now. Now, Gene, welcome to the industry. You said you've been in the hobby working for Intermountain for about four and a half years. That's correct. But you've got a very long background in this industry. You want to elaborate a little bit about yourself? Sure. Most people probably remember me from my rail yard model days. Uh, I started that company in 2002 and ran for about uh, 10 years to 2012. I seem to remember those. Those were those beautiful urethane kits, yes, just when that was kind of a new mode in the market. It, uh, yeah, we kind of uh, expanded on the present take of the urethane models. We added a lot of uh, new, new features. Uh, my kits featured a lot of etched metal parts, and we broke into the industry with uh, CD-ROM instructions. So rather than one or two pages of photocopied instructions that people were used to with those models, we ended up giving them 40, 50, sometimes 100 pages of full color instructions that they put on their computer, blow up and look at in large detail. So it was um, an article with a model. Yes. And on the CD, I was able to include history, uh, roster information, prototype photographs. So it was kind of a, a, a breakthrough. Are it, those kits still available? Are you doing that on the side? No, I don't do that anymore. Okay. Uh, basically, it's all on the used market right now, secondhand. And you've been a model roller for years, I For imagine. years, since, since I'm about five or six years old. Yeah. You're exactly the kind of person that Intermountain needs. But listen, thank you very much for the few seconds here on the show telling us about your new product. And welcome to the Prototype Modelers Meet. We hope you come back next year. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. For this segment, I've got Blaine Hatfield from Exact Rail, one of the more respected companies in the industry. Been in business for between seven and eight years, I'm gonna say, as I sound about right. And the models that they have come with have just been knock your socks off, detailed to the nines. And that's the type of product and that's the level of brand that Exact Rail has become. But it's really neat to meet you and have you on what's neat, because you're just so respected in the industry, Blaine. And I'd like to get a couple words from you about um, your company and how it's been going so far in these past years. Absolutely. So uh, I've been exact rail, with Exact Rail almost since the beginning. The company was founded in 2007, but it didn't start launching product and wasn't known to the public until 2009. Okay. Um, that happened in January. I came on board in June as a product manager, and I'm currently a vice president. Where are you all located at? What part of the country? So we're from Utah. Okay, God's country. Beautiful place, Utah up there. And you've got a couple models here. Now, these are new models that you've introduced this year. What have you got here? Yeah, so uh, the most recent model that we've released is the Southern Pacific uh, G100-22 Gone. It's a signature car, which means the Southern Pacific was the only original owner of the car. Um, in the 22 class, they had 100 cars. They had uh, a different class with was very, very similar with an additional 100 cars. So this is a very, um, very unique car for the SP, um, but one that honestly has been quite well received. Okay. So. What else you got? Uh, we have some new paint schemes that have been popular. Okay. Um, coming to a show like St. Louis, we have a tendency to cherry pick from our inventory those things that best serve the geographic here. Um, our Tr uh, Trinity 64 foot trend cool reefer um, has, for the first time, this paint scheme. Um, these cars, starting in the late 1990s because of the graffiti, had their reporting marks moved high on the car 
uh, we've matched um, all car numbers to cars that actually had that done and reproduced those paint schemes authentically. Okay. It's been a really popular paint scheme for us and as it is, we're almost sold out. So that's a good time to show Absolutely. it to your viewers. It's sort of there. Tell us about your Southern car real quick here. Uh, is that the waffle side car? It is. It's potentially one of the most popular cars that uh, Exactrel has offered. It's okay. the Pullman Standard 5277 waffle box car. Um, this in the 1971 as delivered paint scheme. So this is one of the early paint schemes for um, these deliveries of cars, which of course were many. About how many cars do you think you have in your total line now? Where are you at on that? So in total we have uh, 65 cars. 65 different that's a lot of work you guys are working that's a lot to keep track of now i know there's a question that's been in the minds of a lot of modelers and manufacturers over the years and that's when you all made the company policy to go full internet for sales right. not so much with the dealers and and just more or less see if the internet would how did that work out right um mixed results i would say is probably the best answer um, in the end, it has serviced well, served us well. We made the decision to go um, B to C distribution, business to consumer, um, three years ago. And at this point, we're sticking with it. We're not making any changes. So Very good. If any evidence of how we feel about the model, that's, that's what we're doing. So. Well, you're respected in the industry, and you're a real go-getter with that many models in the market. It's an honor to talk to you on what's neat. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we've got Bob Rivard from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, we all know Bob because, Bob, you've been doing articles in the model press for a good 35 years. I know you and I both worked in Rail Model Journal back in 87, 88, doing articles for Bob Schleicher. And now here at the Prototype Modelers Meet here in St. Louis, tell us about the gorgeous table full of models you brought with you today. Oh, my God. Well, deciding what to take, of course, and what to pack up, and this is... I made an attempt here at least, so I hope the guys are enjoying what I brought down You've here. You've got so. large scale and I yep. see HO scale. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, of course I bought the G scale, the large scale, to uh, get your attention, of course. Right. Because <laughs> I know you're into that. I see your videos and I always see your gorgeous railroad and your trestle. And I, I also ended up building, scratch building a trestle around my pine tree. And it actually performs the surface, the, uh, uh, it actually, it, like the Tehachapi loop to get gradient to make elevation. My backyard's on a slope. So the trestle served a couple purposes there. So it this is up. really nice. Yeah. Now you've got a wood load here. And then of course I see a bulldozer load, just beautiful models. And then of course this Thanks. model is a battery powered locomotive with yes. full lights and sound. So oh, it's like yes. dead rail, isn't that right? Yeah. Something where it's, you don't have to have truck this power. Is, this is called, Marv Kona got me into uh, air. It's called air wire. Okay. So it goes through the air, just like a model airplane. So it's very cool. And of course G scale, uh, nice thing about G-Scale, your models, like when you were a kid, the 125th scale models, there's the, the uh, Caterpillar D8, a must if, you're, if you want a nice load. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a neat uh, aspect of the hobby, the G-Scale. Your combine loads and your HO scale weathering is just beyond anything. It's so beautiful. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, the, the Walthers makes the combine loads, and they're back in production, so you can get these again. Oh, those are and, nice. I can see a lot of people putting that on their list. And of course, one of the cool things now about the internet, you can find photos of anything. So if I want to do a freight car, here's this Rock Island boxcar, the exact car. And of course, in 1977, things become faded. So I'm, of course, of Frank Jordan and I um, are paint guys. So we're always painting and decaling. There's my, I'm trying to match the paint as best I can. It's almost a Penn Central jade green. Wow. But so there's my paint samples as I was painting this car. Bob, let me ask you one more question now. Since you've been an author for so long in the industry, I got, are you still actively writing articles? I am, in fact. Uh, I see a lot of your things. Your, you post, of course, your videos on MRH, and I talked to Joe uh, quite a bit, and I just talked to him last month. He's, I, I sent him just recently, I wrote up a suit, uh, 2500A and the 700, which are both restored and are in service to this day up at the Duluth uh, Transportation Museum. 
Let me ask you this question now. You've been writing for so long, and I just got asked a question a few minutes ago. Somebody said, well, how is it that I even get into the article writing business, or how do I meet these people? What would you suggest to the young folks these days that are interested in writing and journalism in our industry? Um, well, one of the things I notice, it's online. Like, things are, tend to be going online, like with Joe Fugates, the MRH site. Um, right now, that's my favorite uh, place to contribute. and. Um, I don't know magazines are still pretty cool. I was contributing for a while to the um, the uh, National Model Railroad Association's magazine, um, but I just I feel that online is probably maybe where it's at right now. Uh, I really think the MRH site. I mean, I boy, you discover people like Joe, like uh, Mike Confalon. Yeah, I mean, what amazing. he so inspired me to weather my ties. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that, and you of course you always inspire me with your videos. And Frank Jordan, he's a fan of yours. He's, he, he, he inspired me to come down here. So he's a Rock Island model. Those are his over there. So uh, it just worked out great coming down here. Well, so. Bob, I'll tell you what. Thank you for taking a few minutes with us and showing us your gorgeous models and coming to St. Louis. And I hope to see you again next year. Yeah, no kidding. That so, would be great, Ken. Well, Bob Brevard. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, I've got Dave Hussey with me, and this year he's got four new freight cars in his line, in the Cannon line. Dave, you want to tell us about your four? Okay, thanks, Kenny. It's good seeing you again. I've got four laser-cut freight cars. Two of them are Burlington cars, a XML 14 and an XML 16, a Burlington Northern Pullman Standard Plate C car, and a Milwaukee PCNF car that you know in the yellow scheme this year is similar to the car we did a couple of years ago well that's a lot of work four new cars in one year a lot yeah. of computer time and development good for yeah. you so how many cars do you have total in your line probably uh, close to 20 18. 20 different cars and yes. we can find these on your website the it's Canon and company website Canon and Co dot net www Canon and Co dot net okay and there's, the of the screen. right, and there's, you know, there's a shopping cart there. So the freight cars are direct only, and uh, you know they are laser cut styrene, but the the kits include the roofs, ends, and under frames. You know, so the modelers still have to take and supply. And they're not really that expensive. They're all no. around forty to fifty dollars. Right. Some of them in the 30s. So this is really an economical kit. Yes. Now, I, I know last year you told us about your wood loads. How did that do for you in the past year? Has the, that been working out? The wood loads are, are worked out really well. They're very popular. The, what I've done so far is, you know, they're 10 sticks. They're laser engraved on the side of all 10 of them and on the tops of four of them. These, these are the ones I'm doing right now are specifically, the whole piece is 56 feet long. So it fits in like the wheels of time flat car and have various combinations of two by four, two by six, four by four, four by six, and six by six is what I brought here today. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Well, Dave, again, thanks for coming back to St. Louis. Hey, great to see you, buddy. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks. What I'm really excited about is that we're seeing so many new manufacturers here this year. I've counted 15 total new manufacturers that weren't at the show last year. And I've got Paul Federiconi from Details West, came all the way from California to the show today. Paul, tell us a little bit about your new products because you're keeping the line current. Okay, well, I have the new GPS antenna for uh, modern Dash 9 Jeevos. Uh, I have new uh, frogs and track details over here. Uh, my line of uh, accurate signals, GRSs, 
and US and S signals. And uh, oh, I got some switch stand, got ground throws, uh, two new switch stands over here. Yeah, those switch stands really, really look nice. What's yeah. the price point on something like that? Am uh, I $10 or something? No, less than that, two in a package for uh, 350 no kidding. For yeah. Three dollars and fifty cents, I could dress up my turnout and make it look that much better. Right. And that's right. the manganese frog I see you're making. That's the new frog the railroads are using. Right. They say they last longer. Correct. You make that prototype part so we can add to our track detail. Right. And right. Plus, you've still got your full line of detail parts. Oh there. yeah, I have over three hundred part line. Three hundred. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, do you feel that this show is really your audience? Have you had good reception? Uh, this here? show is my audience. It's a lot of prototype models here. Okay. Uh, I like the location, okay. middle of the country in St. Louis. The people from the west and the east come over here. And it's a great show. It is. There's a great yeah. endorsement. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much for a few minutes here on What's Neat. Tell You're me welcome. Tell your new products. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Now I'm with Scott Thornton, and we're going to get an update on the proto throttle that we talked about last year. That was the new throttle that allows us to run a train like a real locomotive engineer because it's got all the features in the cab. Well, Scott's progressed an awful lot in the last 12 months where he's got production models available where we can see what they're going to look like now. But give us an update, Scott, on the dates for when we'll be able to buy one of these at this point. Well, thank you, Ken. Um Dates sometime in, in 2018 is what we're thinking. We still have quite a bit of programming development to do as well as we have to go through, since it's a wireless unit, we have to go through FCC uh, approval. So that's that's where we're working toward right now. So how many months away are we, you think, now? Well, if we can do it by just over the first of the year, we'd be really happy, but probably in the within the first six months next okay. year. Well, we'll keep updated on this because there's a lot of people that have played with this and messed with this throttle at the show, including myself. And I got to tell you, I do not know how to run a real train. And it's it's just opened up a whole nother avenue of education to learn how to do something. And I think it's fascinating. Yeah, thanks, Ken. The, the thing that we're learning is that uh, model railroaders operate, generally speaking, too fast. And, and we were pleasantly surprised to see when they were using the proto throttle, it slowed them down. They had to think about what they were doing as a, as a real engineer would. So that was exciting. It's really cool. Well, thank you for sharing this with us and we look Thanks, forward Ken. to an update. Thanks, appreciate it. Okay. I'm sitting with Jeff Parker from Central Valley Models. There's a name that goes back a long way, Jeff. Tell me, I see you've got a brand new single line structure here. Tell us about this bridge. Yeah, this uh, bridge here is a labor of love for me and a passion. I love the uh, geometry in these bridges and uh, I try to implement every bit of hindsight into every project. So the evolution here has been tremendous and uh, my learning curve is uh, accelerated to a point where I'm extremely excited about future uh, bridges, future uh, you know, deck trusses, pony trusses, uh, all kinds of steel structures. It, you name it, it can be built from steel. And that's the U.S. The United States has made stuff since uh, that we have inherited, and, and uh, we're losing that because it's being replaced. It's rusting away. It's wearing out. And and uh, and having these beautiful works of art is just a passion of mine. So. Uh, you're, like looking for you're preserving history, you're modeling well, history. Way, yeah, I, I believe I am to myself uh, and a lot of other people too. Now a lot of guys are going to be excited about the single track bridge because excited. so many of us model single track. What's the price point on this product? It's retailing right now for $68.95 and uh, it's a night, a beautiful, I'm sorry, $67.95. Okay. And, uh, and it's available at hobby shops? Hobby shops, Walther's, uh, 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 Microscale, uh, or not Micro, I'm sorry, I apologize for that, but uh, um, Micromark uh, has them and uh, everybody has them. Uh, 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 
I can't think of the names of the places. <laughs> Anyways, so you know they look happens. absolutely dynamite. I bet I know I know where one of these are going to fit. So it sounds like a segment where I'm going to build one of these, and I think we should show the uh, folks out there how easy they are to lay out and build. It's just a matter of a yeah, they're they're time consuming. There a lot of people they open the box and they're terrified of look at all these parts and how am I going to build it. But once you get into building one of these, or if you feel like you need help it's, it's just a phone call away you know I can yeah. help you out with it uh, over the phone the, as best I can and, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do we'll build one of these puppies and we'll make a good eight minute segment from start to finish and show how easy it is that would be awesome you know and uh, Tim and I just built 11 of these and, and uh, we did a production and these here we have at the show are actually for sale for people and they got damaged on the aircraft uh, Delta Airlines threw them through the baggage chute. <laughs> Just wonderful, you know. But uh, well, I'm really glad you came to St. Louis. That was a long way for you to travel. It was a very long. Is travel this show course. working out good for you? Is this? Oh, we're just having a lot of fun. I'm enjoying the crowd. I love the crowd. You know, Harry Wong and Steve Priest and all these people put effort into putting these shows on. And this is. I heard people saying that this was the Super Bowl of RPM events. So I thought that was pretty impressive. That's an endorsement right there. Well, thank you, Jeff, for being on with us on What's Neat. All right, thank you very much, Ken. It was good to see you. Now, a lot of times on the show, you see a segue where we show beautiful models and you hear the great music playing and you're sitting there saying, well, who made those great models? Well, I'm standing here with Steve Hurt and he's a gentleman that's responsible for making those large scale models that we've seen on the show. I can remember the yellow truck in my mind, but they're anywhere from HO scale, 125th scale and 116th scale models. Just the best models I've ever seen. Not so much a model railroader, but an absolute model builder. Steve, tell us a little bit about your your gorgeous models we're looking at. Uh, like you said, I'm not necessarily a model railroader. I just enjoy models. Trains are one of the subjects. Uh, I enjoy trucks, trains, anything heavy, dirty, uh, and prototype based for sure. So, now you've modeled this wreck on a flat car, the caboose from prototype photos. Correct. I, I first saw the picture of the prototype in a book from uh, put out by the city of Boonville, Missouri. And as soon as I saw the picture, I knew that I wanted to have a model of it and started collecting the necessary pieces over a couple of years span to put together parts for it. And then it took about a year to build the model itself. So that's uh, absolutely amazing. Now, do you display that? Do you do museum type stuff? No. No, I don't even have stuff on display at my house. It, I'll tell you, there's a market for that. I, I Maybe that's what I should look for. <laughs> that's it. Uh, now I'm looking at your 1 16th scale tractor trailer dumper rig here. Now this is magnificent. Yeah, th that is also, it, it's scratch build based off a of prototype. I've got the pictures of the prototype to go with it that uh, show you know, the, the truck and then show the in progress, the modifications I made to, if I can use kit parts, but I don't get a lot of that because I like to have unique subjects so I don't want something that when I show up at a show like this I don't want to ever take a chance of somebody else setting one down like what I've got. <laughs> so. no, this is this is cast from a lot of parts, scratch built parts? Yes, most of the, the parts as I need them I'll, I'll either make a master out of styrene and then cast in resin or I will make, if it's just a couple I'll make a couple out of styrene. Give me your thoughts on radio controlling one of these. To, to me the radio control stuff it loses detail the sacrifice to make function is the the loss of detail uh, and i don't want to take a toy a toyish look to it i want it to look as realistic as possible now that's from a real model builder now explain to us some of these ho scale models you've weathered you're really good at weathering thank you uh yep yeah, i same thing i primarily build ho scale frisco models my dad is from this area and his family all work for the frisco so that's always had me Frisco base for my railroad subject. So as I find different photos, whether uh, from his collection, books, online, wherever, if something catches my eye, that's that's what I start on. So. And your stuff is amazing. You've got prototype photos next to every model to back it up, the log truck, the yellow truck. I try to document each 
each build from start to finish if I can. Even I never know if people are interested or not. It, you know, but I'll I'll put out the books if it's a major project. I'll have the the photos to go with it, the a little bit of explanation to go with each model, and then the the storyline to go with it. So. Wow, Steve. Steve Hurt from Delaware, Ohio. Absolutely amazing work. Thank you very Thank much. You for being on I Black appreciate Steve. you doing it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Another new manufacturer to the St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet is Soundtracks. Now, you all remember George. He's been on the show explaining to us how the Tsunami 2 and Tsunami 1 decoders have worked in the past few years. But he's now got something new to talk about, and that's this new sound car package where, for the price of the decoder now, you get a speaker and an enclosure, the whole setup and instructions on how to install the sound car in your sound car freight car. But, George, tell us, how's this show working out for you so far? The show's been really good. A lot of good uh, Conversations with people had a lot of good, uh, you know, conversations with everybody. So a lot of good buzz and excitement about the tsunami too. It's really good to get out and talk to people and show them the decoder because you can read a manual, but it's kind of hard to show some of the features that we've got built into there. So once people see it, they start realizing how much better this is on the market than anything else that's there. So it's been really good. Um, kind of want to talk about our sound car though. This is going to be our new bonus uh, packs. These are going to start shipping to stores the end of next week. Uh, as he mentioned, they do have the speaker and the enclosure now to come with the decoder for the same retail price of $59.95. But the other thing, the biggest highlight of this is we've actually gone and revisited the sound car. We've added new bells, new horns, and new caboose whistles now. So you can actually get more choices into your decoder to reproduce cab car operation, caboose push-pull operation, things like that. We've actually even got a new feature now added in that's over and above that though. You guys have spoke, we finally listened. Uh, we did add cattle sounds and sheep sounds into the decoder now. So you as your locomotive or as your car is traveling across the layout, you're going to hear the moos of the cow, the sheep uh, bowing at you as it runs. And there's you and you can adjust the probability of how frequently it does. It'll adjust also based on how fast the, the uh, locomotive or the car is going. Wow. And uh, it'll also base uh, kind of give you some sounds in the background to kind of play the sounds. And then there's also a spook the cattle feature where you can push the function and get them all riled up. So if you want to listen to it really quickly, I can do that for you here. But I have it mapped to F4 right now, but you can map it to any of the buttons that you like on the decoder. Man, I'll tell you what, it's amazing the magic you guys keep dreaming up in Durango and allowing the rest of us to work with and play with. You're adding that fourth dimension, that sound. Exactly. And it's amazing, you just keep coming up with new ideas, George. Yep. But thank you for making the effort to come hey. to the Prototype Modelers Meet. It's, it's. Uh, I'm glad that you're here and I wish you a safe trip. Hey, thank you very much. I had a great time and I really enjoy this. I, I love being a bunch, amongst my peers. I think you're gonna be seeing Cardinals baseball tonight, eh? Uh, probably not tonight, maybe tomorrow. All right. George from Soundtracks at the Prototype Modelers Meet. All right, thanks. For this segment, I'm with Tim Runnels from Oceana, California. I tell you what, what a beautiful place to come from to come here. But you've got the Proto 87 stores and essentially what you're stocking is the essentials for the guy that wants the super detailed scale flanges and detailed track work. You want to tell us a little bit about the neat stuff you got today? Well, today I'd like to show off my self-guiding frog. It's a number six. It comes in all sizes, 83, 70, and 55. You can buy it pre-built or you can buy it as a kit and build it yourself. Um, it operates flawlessly. It works with 88 safe wheels as well as RP25. Uh, it's prototypical in all the yards in North America. Um, we hope to come out with a number four and a number five. Um, we also do uh, 
switch stand operation by an invisible brakeman, so you can get out and you can use the touch to operate your switch stand or your turnout. Well, I see it. Every time you touch this piece of paper, the switch is throwing. That's I can correct. see the target turning. That's amazing. That's correct. Okay. So, th so this little guy right here has a little um, gearbox underneath it, which drives the flag stand on top and operates the points as well. This sells for $14. This is 14 bucks. That's $14. And it turns your target head for your signals just like that. And this will fit into a section of two inch foam so you don't have to have a very deep recess. Correct. Okay. Everybody likes it for the shelf layout because your profile is going to be very narrow. This is a cool thing. And 14 bucks is that's a deal. Okay. And that's so, half price. That should be selling for 30. That's correct. Half price right now. Very good. Okay, I also operate that touch by this Presto card. The Presto card does many things. Okay. The Presto card. Now, the Presto card allows That's me... That's this electronic device right here? That's correct. Okay. Everything plugs in and out, so it's very user-friendly. If you make a mistake, all you do is turn the plug backwards, and now you have the right connection. And this is what helps operate the turnouts. And, the, and, and you can also operate this from remote location, either by a panel, a remote panel, or the dispatcher panel. The card is also operating all the LED lights as well as the push buttons. Okay. And what's really cool about this is when you power your layout down and you power it up, everything comes to a preset position. So you don't have to walk your layout to figure out what you did last oh, night. So all the switches will go to a preset position when you turn on the layout. Correct. That's pretty neat. Isn't and you that said, and that's uh, how much is that retail? Ten dollars. Ten bucks. Okay. Then I also have these cool rail aligners. Now the rail aligners fit. We'll show a close up of that on camera. That's pretty small. Is what we do is we cut with a Dremel disc a little slot on the bottom flange of the rail and stick the H in. Then the other end of the rail will slide up so when you go to build hand laid track, you don't have a bump on your ties. Wow, and it also looks like it's a joint bar at the same time when you fold it over, am I right? Um, not necessarily. I do have photo etched joint bars that are for code 70 and 83 and they lay flat against the edge of the... Uh, Boy, I tell you what, I, I need to get with you and buy some of these from you. Chris, the Atherin Photography, Chris Palomares at Atherin tells me we need joint bars. Yes, that's correct. That And it makes it look so much more real. It just adds to the track work. You highlight them a little bit and these are the finest ones I've ever seen. Awesome. Yeah, they're very nice, very easy to, to use. I like to, you work with a syringe and needle. I put my ACC in this. I have great control. I also use it with flux and solder paste. It's a really neat. That's a good idea. 21st century of model building. You got to have this. Right. No more puddles and toothpicks. Right. This, this is just, you just have so much more control over it with, with, with a needle and a syringe. We have two sizes of needles, one for a oh, little bit. Oh, you sell these? Oh, yeah. Okay. We sell these. They come uh, in a three pack for five bucks. Okay. And, and I guess you replace a tip every time you use it? Uh, the it, idea? If you, if you leave this out, yeah. it will, the ACC will dry and it'll plug your needle. But after you're done using the ACC, if you put it in the fridge, the glue will never set in the needle. Oh, there's a cool trick. And if you use it fast enough, you can pull this out and add more ACC to it. Wow, now that's really neat. So, that is cool. Well, Tim, listen, thank you for showing us all the cool stuff you've brought to the prototype modelers. Can I here. add one more really cool thing? Shoot. I have a curve calculator on my website. You guys figure out whatever radius you want to build to, the calculator will calculate the radius, whatever number switch you want to use, and it'll come out with a template. What website is this that we would have to go to? www.proto87.com. And then you can also find all your products on that website? That's correct. All right, Tim. Well, thank you very much for being on What's Neat. Hey, thanks, Ken.
So the show went really quick this year, it seems like. I've got Lonnie Bathurst, who has helped put on the show, the prototype modelers meet here in town. And I want to say the numbers are higher than last year. I guess we had about 15 new manufacturers this year. And about how many attendees? About 575, not quite. About 575 folks. So it was a really good show. I want to say it was almost 15,000 square feet this year about. Uh, I think a little more. I think there might be a 25. 25, so it's 10,000 square feet than it was yesterday more, or yeah, last year, yeah, than it was more. So it's really, it's a tribute to the fact that this show keeps growing. It's an important Midwest meet, where we get to meet with all the folks from around the country. And do we have the dates for next year, Lonnie? Yes, July 20th and 21st. July 20th and 21st. Write that down on your calendar for next year's Prototype Modelers Meet in St. Louis. We could call it the Arizona Transcom. There you go. We can't call it New Mexico because that's just the wrong locomotives for that. <laughs> Thank you. 